Well, thank you. I want to thank the organizers for this wonderful meeting and uh, thank everyone for being here. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, this uh, recent joint work with uh, Arco Lettinen about the associative communitive spectra for uh, some varieties of groupoids. Um, so I'm going to begin with, uh, with some definitions. Okay. Okay. So what's a groupoid? Well, that's just a set with a binary operation. Um, a set G has a binary operation star. And uh, we can try to uh, look at all the uh, energy operations on this groupoid uh, induced by uh, bracketings of all uh, of n variables. So not just two variables at a time, but we try to uh, use n variables. So an example is showing here, we have four variables, x1 through x4, and we can use a binary operation star uh, to uh, generate uh, some um, Energy operations where n is four. And there's five different ways. That's not surprising because we know these are in bijection with binary trees with four leaves. And there's five of them. And that's a cat in the number. Uh, so the set P star n is going to be the set of all these energy operations we get. Um, sorry, um, there is actually um, a subtlety here. I will explain that in a minute. Um, so um, the set P star n. Uh, the cardinality of that is at least one for sure, but it's at most uh, Cn minus one, where n is the number of variables. Uh, that's because the cat number Cn uh, is the number of binary trees with uh, n plus one leaves. Um, and um, the inequality here um, is because um, some of these binary op uh, operations from these binary trees may coincide with each other. It depends on what binary operation star we have. Um, you know, some of them may be exactly the same. For example, if uh, your operation is associative, then uh, you always get the same results, uh, no matter how you uh, insert the brackets. So uh, we get one uh, for the cardinality of P star N. Um, so, so on the other hand, if your operation is not associative, then the uh, cardinality of P star N is bigger than one, and is at most Cn minus one. So it, how large is it exactly? That actually measures um, you know, how far away your operation is away from uh, being associated. So that's why um, Sakani and uh, Waldhauser, they defined the associative spectrum for a binary operation star uh, to be the, just a sequence of um, you know, the uh, cardinalities of uh, these sets P star N. So they use S sub, uh, sub N super A star for this cardinality. And uh, around the same time, uh, Brayton and Stilberger, they uh, studied the same sequence. Uh, they call that the sub associativity type for this groupoid. So again, this is like a measure for the uh, associativity for a groupoid. And there's also a connection between this and um, uh, the, group, the, the opera the theory. Um, we have a non-asymmetric operat, uh, P star, uh, that consists of uh, all these sets P star N we mentioned earlier. And uh, there's an identity element in P star one. There's a composition function satisfying some coherence axioms. Um, and uh, in operat theory, people study the uh, Hilbert theories of an operat. And for, from this uh, operat uh, associated with this operation, binary operation star, uh, we get a Hilbert theories and their, the coefficients are, are exactly um, those numbers uh, in um, the uh, associative spectrum for this groupoid. And uh, on the other hand, um, there's also a, a symmetric groupoid, uh, sorry, uh, operad uh, that can be defined based on a uh, groupoid. Um, and um, the difference is that we um, not only uh, insert bracketings uh, to uh, form an energy operation for uh, n variables. We also permute those variables in all possible ways. Um, and then um, people study the Hilbert theories for a symmetric operat is, uh, is it like a, like a exponential generating function. And then the coefficients uh, are the cardinality um, of uh, the set P star n uh, over n factorial. P star n is the set of all the uh, energy operations from brackets of all the variables with permutations. So that's the key difference. 
And then based on that, uh, we started to uh, study the uh, uh, associative commutative spectrum. Um, and this is uh, also called AC spectrum. And uh, we write this as S sub N super AC for the operation star uh, or the groupoid. Um, and uh, this is the cardinality of the set P star, P bar star N. And this is going to measure both uh, the uh, non-associativity and non-commutativity of this binary operation at the same time. And uh, it's at least one again. And um, uh, it is exactly one if uh, your binary operation is both commutative and associative. Um, and this can be as big as n factorial times uh, Cn minus 1, uh, n factorial coming from the permutations of the n variables, Cn minus 1 coming from the number of binary trees with n leaves. Um, and uh, um, this, e this inequality actually holds as an equality when the uh, groupoid is a free groupoid on one generator. So this can be reached. Um, and uh, if your binary operation is only associative, uh, then uh, your uh, AC spectrum is bounded above by n factorial. Um, so the associativity basically identified all the results from different binary trees, but we still have n factorial different permutations of the variables. Um, and then this equality holds if the groupoid is a free associative groupoid on two generators or any associative non commutative groupoid with an identity element. Um, and then we also can think about all the um, commutative groupoid, uh, not, not necessarily associative. And in that case, the AC spectrum is bounded above by the number dn minus 1. And dn is defined as uh, 2 n factorial over 2 to the n times n factorial. And this equality uh, can be achieved by a free commutative groupoid on one generator. And we'll re revisit this number in a minute because it has something to do with trees. Any questions so far? Okay, so uh, let's look at all the- Make sure the n is a double factorial, right? Sorry, what's that? The n is a double factorial. Yes, that's correct. It's, it's also given by double factorial. Yes, exactly right. Okay, so let's look at some two element groupoids. These are like kind of like the, the simplest family of groupoids uh, that are not so trivial. So there are actually uh, seven different ones up to isomorphism or anti-isomorphism. And uh, some of them, um, are just associative or commutative. Um, and uh, Sakani and Waterhauser, they find all the associative spectrum for these groupoids. And then we determine their AC uh, spectrum in our earlier work. So it's exactly one for the first and third and fourth. Uh, and then uh, the second uh, one defined above is associative but not commutative. And uh, we determine the AC spectrum for that is equal to n, which is smaller than the upper bound n factorial for associative uh, groupoids. And also the fifth one is also interesting and is basically two times n, where n is at least three. It's neither associative nor uh, commutative. And um, this number dn is appearing here again for uh, the sixth one, which is the negated disjunction. And that's actually the number of unordered binary trees with n labeled leaves. And then the last one is implication, and the AC spectrum is n to the n minus one, which is number of unordered rooted trees with n labeled vertices. So some of these already appeared in um, the talk earlier today by Stefan. And we'll see more trees later in my talk. And our next goal, that's uh, one main goal in our uh, current work, is to study uh, three elements groupoids. There are actually more than 3,000 different ones. Uh, so there's, um, it's going to be hard to, to, to study off the spectrum of all of them. Um, so we um, followed, um, following Sakani and Waldhauser's work, we started, started with a, a few different families of, so a few uh, different uh, three element groupoids. And uh, we, la we have a labeling from one to um, 3,330 for these groupoids. And uh, Sakani and Waldhauser determined the uh, associative spectrum for some of these three element groupoids. And uh, the uh, answers, some of them involves exponential or you know, uh, Fibonacci number. Um, and uh, we determined uh, the AC spectrum of these three element groupoids. And we actually went a little forward 
and uh, we established more general results for varieties of groupoids, uh, which are characterized by uh, certain sets of identities. And uh, they can be represented by certain element, three element groupoids, but they include more. So one example, you know, our earlier results on the uh, commutative groupoids, we cannot rephrase it because being commutative means it satisfies the identity XY is equal to YX. And um, the AC spectrum, sorry, the first one actually is the associative spectrum. I had a typo here. It's bounded about by cat number CM minus one. The AC spectrum is bounded about by BM minus one. And then if the second inequality holds as equality, then that implies that the first one is also an equality. And then both of these equalities are true for these three uh, groupoids uh, on three elements. So this is an earlier result rephrased. Um, and uh, we have a, a lot of results like this in our new work. And we summarized our results uh, in a table right here. Um, so uh, each variety of groupoids um, is defined by a certain set of identities. And the uh, upper bound for the associative spectrum um, are given here, and also the uh, upper bound for the uh, AC spectrum are also given. And also the equalities will be true uh, for uh, some uh, three element groupoids. We listed those three element groupoids. And um, uh, also the um, opposite groupoid for a groupoid will have the same spectrum. So that's also listed here. And um, you can see some of these upper bounds for the AC spectrum are linear, like n, n plus one, 2n, 3n, or quadratic. There's 2m squared there. And there's an exponential bound two to the n minus one, minus one. And there's some other bounds invi involving factorials and uh, other exponential bounds there. And then the last few involves a number uh, b, n, um, or b, n, two. So let me uh, explain those numbers. So b, n is the bell number that counts partitions um, of the set one through n into unordered blocks. And there's also restricted bell numbers B and M, um, then the, uh, we restrict the, the size of the blocks to be at most M. There's also ordered bell number or forbidden number, that's B prime N. And our upper bounds holds after a certain threshold. That's why there's a column here for the least value of N for our upper bounds to be true. And, um, and then um, there is uh, uh, different um, results different upper bounds for AC spectrum and for the group wise with the same associative spectrum. So our AC spectrum sometimes has a, a more information. Um, and um, also sometimes we may use depth like, or other uh, pieces of information to characterize this instead of identities. Um, and um, there are some questions um, from our work. Um, for example, um, we, um, we, we found our computations, a lot of times the AC spectrum reaches the uh, upper bound M factorial times CM minus one, but we don't know exactly when. And also we have some computations on uh, some other uh, three element groupoids and um, they're up, they look like, it, you know, it looks like we get some interesting sequences that are different from some of the others I mentioned earlier, but I can't determine those. So these are also something we can study uh, in the future. I think I'm out of time, so I'll just stop here. I wanna thank you for um, your attention.